Welcome back, Lavesa, and today I figured we'd take a little deep dive into the Codex broadly, what it's gotten us, and what exactly we'll be looking at for our battle suits this edition. This is going to be very surface level stuff, just a quick little overview of all the battle suits that we have, characters included, to look at what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, and how exactly is the best way to use them on the tabletop. Later, I will be definitely getting more in-depth for each of the specific suits and each of the specific data sheets on what they're tailored towards and how to use them best. This is just going to be a broad overview. Might help you with collecting, might help you with how you play them a little bit. Just, you know, uh, kind of in general. Just, you know, a little bit, a little fun to look, at them all, look over them all. Anyways, I digress. Uh, let's get into it. So we're going to start off with Shadow Sun. Very clearly, her strengths are her durability. She is untouchable because she's lone op, and she even has stealth. And on top of that, she's got a minus one to wound as well. So if you get within range to shoot her, she is very difficult to deal with. And after that, you would have to actually charge her in order for all of those lone op, stealth, and minus one to wound all be ineffective. So she is very durable. From there, she's also very good at anti-tank with her strength 10 guns, 18 inch range, so you can sh you, she can shoot you outside of the lone op range, so you can't shoot her, but she can hit you. Very good stuff like that. She's also a phenomenal buffing piece. So in general, she's good tanky, good at hitting tanks, and good at buffing everyone in the general area. Her weakness, though, is, uh, well, nothing really to speak of, to be completely honest. Uh, 10 inch move means she's pretty mobile and she has fly, so you can't really complain too much about her. From there, we're going to go on to Farsight, and he is pretty dang good. The plus one to wound is probably his strength. He makes anything that is anti-infantry hit that much harder into infantry and everything else, and anything that is anti-tank be that much more effective into the anti-tank. The strength is being a very good buffing piece, and he's actually strong at melee. He's a good melee threat. You could throw him at something, and he'll actually be able to do some hefty amount of damage to it, and tank shocking will give a lot of mortal wounds on top of it. So he's your good wounding and melee threat. His weakness is a dedicated melee. He is a good bullying piece, good at hitting people hard in melee, but if you put him into an actual dedicated melee unit that hasn't been softened up prior by a good shooting phase, he's going to fold. Uh, you have him with his full like crisis suit unit, uh, three other suits, the nice good old like five wounds a pop, little sh uh, shield of uh, veteran cadre around him as uh, bodyguards. Uh, that, that doesn't really mean squat. People can cut through that with dedicated melee units and Farsight as now, sure, it's good. He has a two up to a four up, but he can still be laid low because he's only T5. So any truly dedicated melee units will wipe the floor with him and the boys that he's hanging out with. So you got to be wary of that. The Enforcer Commander. Now he has pretty good strengths of uh, being a good weapon flat one. He has a capacity, this is the same with Gold Star Commander, to take four weapons, which unlike the other crisis suits, they max out at two a pop. So he's very good at having a very well-rounded and a very lethal capacity. After that, his durability is pretty dang good as well. He buffs up the units of crisis suits that don't have shield generators by making it so that it's minus one to any incoming armor penetration. His weakness though is pretty obvious. He's slow. You're gonna want guys that are that are gonna be able to pretty much stay in one spot and not have to shift too far around and fire long range guns down range. That's what he's there for. He's not really there for really jumping around too much. He's slower. He's tankier. That's just how it works. After that, you got the Cold Star. He's pretty much the inverse of that. Good weapons platform, but he's fast, and he's a glass cannon. So, you know, like he strengths being fast, he's also good at shooting, but his weakness is he doesn't really have much durability. Sure, you can give him a shield gen, but on that same note, he's not durable like the Enforcer Commander. It is what it is. From there, we've got our stealth suits. The stealth suits are probably by far, of all the battle suits, the best guiders, because you can give them a mark light so that whoever they're guiding ignores cover, and on top of that, they give you reroll ones to hit and wound now, so they are infinitesimally better than they used to be. The only issue is they're not that durable, and with their abilities of being able to forward deploy and stuff, you put them in a quite vulnerable position. They aren't necessarily uh, ideal to be up front 
And if all of your guiders that give you rerolling ones to hit and wound get taken away, then you really lose a lot of the damage capacity for the other units that they're buffing. So they have a little bit of a contrary in their positioning on the board and their job in your list. From there, we go on to the Crisis Suits. The Sunforge, obviously, phenomenal anti-tank. They're also the most durable because they've got the shield generators. Forp and Volm, very, very good. After that, um, their weakness is their range isn't that impressive, and they're not that fast. Sure, 10 inches is fairly fast, and auto-advancing 6 is really good. But 12-inch uh, range guns, not that good. You're going to want to be putting them in a detachment where they can get up close and personal for deep striking purposes, or you're going to be wanting to rapid ingress them in, or on top of that, you're going to want a crisis suit leader to be the cold star so it gets them up nice, close, and personal so their guns can get with melt range and they can fully utilize their lethal capacity. Anyways, after that, you're going to, we're going to look at the crisis suit fire knife. Um, their strengths are they're good at anti-elite. They have nice amount of rerolls. They're pretty good into the marine level stuff with two wounds and even the non-marine level stuff with three wounds with the plasma rifles. The only issue is their gun ranges are not consistent whatsoever. The gun ranges on their plasma rifles are way shorter than the gun ranges on their missile pods. So yeah, 18 inches versus 30 inches, not really good. You gotta pick one or the other. Mixing and matching is no longer a thing. Not to mention the plasma rifles just got crippled into oblivion, so that's pretty dang bad. And on top of it, they're not that durable. They don't have a shield generator, so there's no 4-up invuln. So if you're going to want to use them, you might want an enforcer with them. And you probably just want to ditch the plasmas because they're just too short range. I don't think it's worth it. And again, that's my personal opinion. Uh, do what you will. From there, we go on to the crisis suits with the Star Scythe. They are phenomenal anti-horde. They have a good amount of AP. It's literally baked into their data sheet. They just get more AP. They're phenomenal at Overwatch with their flamers. Beautiful. All good things. And then when you go to their weaknesses, uh, their strength's pretty low. They can't really punch up in anything like that, but that's fine. Their entire thing is being anti-horde. And once again, they're not very durable. They don't have a shield gen like the Sunforge. So from here, we go down to the Ghost Kill, and the Ghost Kill is definitely one of the most well-rounded units. They're very durable, and it has good damage. The only issue is, depending on the gun you pick, the ranges on the gun doesn't really reflect its ability of being a lone op. You don't really want to have your lone ops getting really that up close and personal with their fusion guns at 18 inches for your opponent to then just walk within your lone op range and blow you up like that. The ion gun is pretty good as far as sitting back and with a 36 inch range for someone to get within 12 they'd have to move 24 inches of your range which would be fairly difficult over of course a couple turns so you know overall ghost heal is probably one of the most well-rounded units and they're also able to just tank a lot of damage so weaknesses sure like the guns don't always match the job they're trying to fill but more often than not it does so don't worry about it too much ghost heal very well-rounded Broadside, its strengths are very obvious. It is phenomenal anti-tank. It is a wonderful anti-tank. Railguns are our anti-tank, and these guys have it in spades. After that, they're very dur durable. Two up save, T6. It's pretty dang good. Also, the number of wounds they have, and I'm pretty sure they don't give up too much bring it down points either. But someone can correct me in the comments below. The only issue with these guys are they're very slow. They are, uh, they're very slow. So <laughs> they're going to be sitting in one spot and not really moving too much, unless you're going to be advancing them a lot so that they can, you know, jump around the board a bit much in the Montcott attachment. They're going to be staying in one small spot of the board and just taking down one fire lane. And you won't have to worry about anything showing its head there. And they also don't have an invuln save, so any truly dedicated anti-tank will suffer against them. Well, they will suffer when it's shot at them. Because, well, they don't have a 4 pinball like some of their other uh, Battlesuit Brothers do. Speaking of Battlesuit Brothers with Invulns, let's go to the Riptide. Their strengths are they're very fast. They have phenomenal range and are really durable, partially because of that Invuln. But, uh, you see, the issue is their guns aren't really consistent for anything. Like, their anti-elites are alright. Their anti-horde slash marine gun isn't terribly impressive. And... Even the 
anti elite gun tries to be a little anti tank, and that's not even all that good. It's just the guns aren't typically like very heavily dedicated to one position or the other. So they're a good platform, or like they're good as far as like just standing there, but they're not going to be pushing out too much damage typically. So you're going to want to put them in detachment that will bring that out in them, i.e. Uh, the battlesuit one. Retaliation cadre for the win. Anyways, after that, the final one is the Storm Surge. And uh, its strengths are it's a phenomenal anti-tank. It is very durable with a 4-up invuln, 2-up armor save, T11. Beautiful, beautiful thing. And it has a nice variety of guns as well. Um, however, <laughs> this thing is really slow. So similar to the broadside, it's going to be sitting in one spot, taking down one aisle, one uh, shooting lane, and just keeping that to be yours, or have a big firefight with another big heavy tank unit. That being said, uh, its variety in guns is not conducive to how guiding works these days. You're not going to want to put all of its small arms fire into a big tank. It's just not viable. It's not a smart tactic to do. It just doesn't work out that well for you. So that's its main weakness. It's good otherwise, though. Anyways, that was my little uh, run-through of all of the battle suits that we have, their strengths, their weaknesses, and uh, how maybe you can improve upon it a little bit. We're going to do way more in-depth on everything later on, but I just had to request in the comment section that I figured, you know what, I'll hammer this one out really quick for everybody. So I hope you all enjoyed, and I hope you all will tune in for the live stream later tonight. And uh, I hope... Oh, wait, no, I forgot. I got to... Thank my patrons. I'm a horrible, horrible person. Thank you, the new Vic, Samger, Ryan Hall, David Palilio, K Mag, Jonathan Patino, Chris F., Mark, Magnus the Rody, and created by Philip. I really appreciate you guys keeping the lights on out here. It means the world. Very appreciative. And I hope you all will tune in later tonight for the live stream. And I hope your day goes for the greater good.